Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading in our novel, Esperanza Rising. And we are going to start reading um, in the middle of chapter seven where we left off. But before we get started, we have a quick write. It says, have you ever failed at something the first time you tried it? How did this make you feel? Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the focus question. It says, how does Esperanza's first day of work reveal that she's naive? How are Marta and Miguel's responses to Esperanza's problem different? What does this reveal about each character? Our vocabulary words are vigorously, and that's when you do something forcefully or with a lot of effort. So this woman is vigorously cleaning the floor. She's trying really hard to scrub it. The second one is um, tittering. That's like quiet laughter or giggling. So you draw line through this picture. And then the last one is ridicule. And that's when someone makes fun of you. So this group of people is ridiculing this guy or making fun of him. Alright, go ahead and turn the page. And as we're reading chapter 7, we're going to use our CSPS strategy. We're on page 106. When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light, and she heard Mama, Hortensia, and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled cafe and chorizo. The coffee and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to hers, so Esperanza quietly pulled on a long regal shirt and white blouse. She brushed her hair and went into the other room. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table, Hortensia patted her hand. You missed going to the foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all the food come from? asked Esperanza. Hortin Josefina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until we can go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama. You and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be packing grapes and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the sheds. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You are not old enough to work in the sheds, said Mama, and Isabel is not old enough to watch the babies by herself. If you watch the babies, then Josefina can work, and that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job, too, sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they will deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. We'll stop right there because we have information about the character. In box one, we would write, Esperanza's job at the camp will be to watch the babies while with Isabel while the adults go to work. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, we will write down this, an this quote on page 107. Esperanza said, Mama, you and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the setting. And we know that it's um, the next morning. Esperanza spent her first night at the camp and she gets up and people are eating breakfast. So in box two we would write, Esperanza wakes up the next morning and walks into the kitchen where everyone is eating breakfast. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And you can write down this quote for Mama on page 106. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep reading. The bottom of page 107, Esperanza says, 
What's the platform? Go ahead and turn the page. It's a big wooden floor outside in the middle of camp. Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at her food. She did not want to be stuck in camp with the children. Where's Miguel? she asked. He already left for Bakersfield with some other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom rubbing her eyes. Me sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mama as she made un burrito de frijoles for lunch and wrapped the soft tortilla filled with pinto beans in paper. She looked different. Was it the long cotton dress or the big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mama, said Esperanza, your hair. Mama ran down, Mama's hair ran down the back, down her back in a single long braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mama wear her hair that way. It was always done up in a beautiful plaited bun or when she was ready for bed, brushed out and flowing. Mama looked shorter and somehow not herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Right, so we have her um, Esperanza's problem. She sees her mom wearing her hair differently, um, and that is just too much change for her. And so she gets upset that her mother looks different. In box three, we would write, Esperanza is shocked when she sees mama's hair in a simple braid. She does not like it. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And you can write down this quote at the bottom of page 108. Mama said Esperanza, your hair. Or this quote on page 109. Mama looks shorter and somehow not herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Press pause to write down the quote and play when you're ready to keep reading. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I, I figured out that I can't wear a hat with my hair on top of my head. And this makes more sense, does it not? After all, I'm going to work today, not to a fiesta. Then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The truck leaves at 6.30 to take us to the sheds. Take good care of the babies and stay with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up hesitantly, touching her hair again. When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the fields. Straight ahead across the dirt road were several chinaberry trees and a mulberry tree that provided deep shade over a wooden table. Beyond the rows of trees were great fields, still lush. To the right, across the grassy field, was the main road. A truck piled high with produce drove by, losing a cloud of debris. As it passed, the sharp smell told her they were onions, the dry outer skins being shredded by the wind. Another truck followed. Again, the smell bit into her senses. It was still early, so the air was cool, but the sun was bright, and she knew it would be hot soon. The hens pecked and poked around the front steps. They must have been happy to be off the train. Esperanza shooed them out of her way as she turned and walked next door. The babies were still in their pajamas. Isabel was struggling to feed Lupe her oatmeal while Pepe crawled on the floor. Splotches of his cereal still stuck to his cheeks. As soon as he saw Esperanza, he reached for her. Let's clean them up, said Isabel, and then I'll show you the camp. First, Isabel took Esperanza to the platform she was to sweep and showed her where the brooms were stored. Then they walked through the rows of cabins, each with a baby on her hip. As they passed open doors, Esperanza could already smell the beans and onions that someone had started simmering for dinner. Women were dragging big metal wash tubs beneath the shade trees. A group of young boys kicked a ball up and down the dirt road, stirring up dust. 
A little girl wearing a man's undershirt as a dress ran up to Isabel and took her hand. This is Sylvia. She's my best friend. Next week, we will go to school together. Sylvia switched around and grabbed Esperanza's free hand. Esperanza looked down at Sylvia's dirty hands. Sylvia grinned up at her, and Esperanza's first thought was to pull away and wash it as soon as possible. Then she remembered Mama's kindness to the peasant girl on the train and her disappointment in Esperanza. She didn't want Sylvia to start crying if she were to pull away. All right, we'll stop right there. Um, Esperanza is spending time with Isabel and the babies, and Isabel is showing her around the camp, and this little girl Sylvia comes up to her with her dirty hands, and Esperanza has to decide how she's going to respond. And then instead of pulling away this time, Esperanza keeps holding her hand. She looked ar around at the dusty camps and thought that it must be hard to stay clean in a place like this. She squeezed Sylvia's hand and said, I have a best friend too. Her name is Marisol and she lives in Aguas Calientes. All right, so we have our solution. Um, Esperanza although she's upset about mama's hair, that shows that she's still having trouble adjusting to this new life. But instead of um, responding like she usually does to dirty children, she decided to keep holding this little girl's hand. Um, so that does show some acceptance on Esperanza's part. So in box four, we would write, Esperanza thinks about pulling her hand away from Sylvia's dirty hands, but she decides to be kind instead. And we would write down this quote at the bottom of page 111. She looked around at the dirty camp and thought that it must be hard to stay clean in a place like this. Press pause to write down the quote and play when you're ready to keep reading. And then um, Isabel introduces her to someone else and they knew someone for, from Aguas Calientes and Esperanza was like, oh my goodness, do you know Marisol? And Melina, the girl, was like, no, because like, my friend was a servant and Marisol is not. And that made Esperanza feel really awkward. Um, and then Isabel tells her that like everyone already knows all about her because you know people in the camp like to talk. And so everyone kind of knows everyone's business. All right, so let's go to our paragraph. It says, how does Esperanza's first state of work reveal that she's naive? All right, and you can talk about um, how, like, she thinks she's going to go with the adults and, like, instead of with the children. And you can talk about how she responds to Mama's hair or um, how she responds to this lady, Melina.